Hey, it's Rounded Rob, and I'm hanging out with Jack and Dan. Uh, basically just put a hole through it and then put about, you know, another one here, another one here. And after a few of those, this is where the under gravel light's gonna shine through. And then the reason that we made that bigger is so that it would fit right on top and go down in the gravel. And then the little fish would be able to go down there and clean it up without getting gravel in it. And then the lights will shine up through here. This is gonna go in here for the bamboo but we're just gonna silicone some plastic in these holes so we can fill it with gravel. The bamboo will come out of here, the fish will be able to go in here, and it'll be lit up from the bottom. It really wasn't that hard to do. Honestly, I thought it would be harder. Um, you just kind of put four holes, and honestly, a lot of this stuff you could just knock off with like a little hammer. Wasn't bad at all. Yeah, so we still got like four of these left. We got so many of these. So even though this kind of made this dull going through this pottery, every time we bought a rain barrel, which we have eight of, it came with one of these and they'd just been sitting here for years. We actually tried to sell them at a garage sale and nobody wanted them. I couldn't even give these things away. Nobody was interested at all. All right, so these pots are pretty much all done and ready to go. The next step was we took some, basically just some strip scrap plastic that we had left over and siliconed it in over these holes. Really simple, put some silicone on them, splatted them on there, kind of gooted on there. You can see where you, we're wearing gloves and what that's gonna do is that's gonna stop the gravel from coming out. Those guys are then gonna go right in there. Okay, so the gravel will be in here, the bamboo will be coming out the top, the fish and the lights, the fish will be coming in here where the light up area is. Now what we did with this is we used the same thing, basically a doorknob handle to drill a hole in the under gravel filter. However, we have to seal the hurricane to the under gravel filter. So we put some wax paper underneath this and come on over here to the other side. You can see how we did it. And if you look down in here, you can kind of see how that silicone is sealing off the hurricane and the under gravel filter. So what'll happen is gravel will be on top of this. This will all be covered with gravel but this will go all the way to the bottom of the tank because we've pushed it down. The light will then come up through there. The fish will be able to clean it, but the gravel won't go down there and the under gravel filter will still work. So this one is done. And again, we're just using, you know, aquarium sealant, 100%. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one next. Then probably either later today or tomorrow, after they're both kind of like uh, dry, we're gonna turn them over and kind of make sure they're sealed from the bottom. And then basically what we'll have is this kind of hole going through the underground filter. Okay, so you can see down inside here that that silicone isn't touching the bottom, but if I press down on this, this is touching the bottom. So this is gonna touch the bottom of the glass. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you're taking out some filtration by doing this. Yeah, but it's not really any different than putting in a sculpture, like a piece of rock or a plant or something of that nature. We still have all of this surface area of the under gravel filter that's gonna be working. Now you can see here when we were drilling, we kind of broke part of this. So what we did is we just kind of reinforced it with this. And when we do flip it over, um, which will be probably either late tonight or tomorrow afternoon, for you guys, it'll only be one second though. And we'll kind of show you what this all looks like from underneath. All right, we waited till the next morning because we wanted this to be nice and dry, so it's really good right now. What we're gonna do is, gonna flip it over. You could see how the wax paper was there. We put the wax paper just in case any of this stuff leaked down. We didn't want it obviously getting on anything, but it actually didn't, didn't really touch. So Jess can hold that for a second. And what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna bring this right over here and put that upside down right on top of it. So you can see now how that's facing down in there. So this is the bottom. And again, there's a little bit of residue left on here. This is an old, old underground filter. We basically set it out in the rain and just let the rain kind of do its thing on it. So you can see a lot of this did come through. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go around this bottom one more time just to make sure this is all sealed off on both of these. Okay, so we're just making sure it's sealed and in this area where this one cracked, we're just kind of, you know, filling it in to make sure it stays sealed. 
and uh, yeah, really hopefully this will work out pretty well. We've done under gravel lights with a grating system that came in pieces. And we just left those grates out, remember? Yes. But for this, we had to actually remove it because it was one piece. I don't even think they sell a lot of under gravel filters like this anymore. Um, this is the original one. Who knows how old it is, but it's still in pretty good shape. And uh, because it's wavy like this, it has even more surface area. So it's actually really good. You can see basically what this is doing is giving us a channel to shine the light from the bottom of the tank all the way up through this vase. This is exactly how this is gonna be sitting on this vase. So what we're doing here is we wanna make sure that there's no silicone kind of protruding over the bottom of this glass. We want it to be nice and level. So it's always good to get gloves when you work on these two. These are nitrile, by the way. If you've never used nitrile gloves, they're great much better than latex and people who have latex allergies these are better and you can get them at drug mart for about what we get them for like 2.99 for a box of 50 or something yeah and uh you don't really want to like like yeah you can breathe this in but like you shouldn't and we have a fan on obviously yeah we have the door open we have a fan on and plus we're not going to be here we're kind of yeah. setting this up before we leave yeah. and um so yeah that looks pretty good we're going to let this dry and we'll come back and start setting up this filter later this weekend after this all dries. All right, so luckily we got the Works Aero Cart. Jack helped me kind of prop it up here. We got a towel underneath it and uh, made it over the threshold. It wasn't incredibly hard, was it, kiddo? No. So we're going to work our way down the hallway here. This Works Aero Cart, let me tell you, this thing's a lifesaver. We've been meaning to do a video on this. This is a good introduction, but we are definitely going to be doing more of a video on it. Uh, some of the other things that it can do and how we use it a lot around here. It's really big. I don't have this strapped on. I'm basically just pushing with my thumbs against the tank to the bottom. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is an old school tank. It is super heavy and it is really something. So what we're gonna do is, we're just, oh wow, check this out. Go over there by the door and look at that glitter paint with that sun hitting it, man. Ooh. That's neat, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're basically just gonna put this over here on the carpet and uh, probably between the three of us, we're gonna be able to lift it on the stand here. All right, so there she is. We gotta lift her up on here. Honestly, it's been really super hot and sticky and this tape held up really good even in the hot garage so i don't think it's going to have a problem holding on that gorilla tape is fantastic this tank is almost going to be as tall as the 220 the stand is just a little bit shorter but the tank is really tall we got the new light fixture hooked up there that's going to be awesome so the stand is ready to go you can see like i said we kind of did the two-tone um kind of like the sand light sand dark sand mixture and then the doors were done like a stone the top was done a little lighter but you're not really going to see the top Again, everything inside was completely painted as well. We do have a little extra paint if we need to touch up. No odor. Everything smells brand new, doesn't it, kiddo? Yeah, it smells really nice. Reinforced it. We've got two outlets back there. We've got a uh, circuit breaker right here. Probably put another one in there. It's about five centimeters from the wall, a little closer than the other one. Since we're doing under gravel filters, we don't need as much space as we have behind this one with the hang on the back. Jack's playing with yeah. nitrile gloves, yeah. <laughs> waiting for Pamela to come in. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited to see what that background looks like with this light slamming down on it. This is gonna be really neat. All right, dude, so look at that. I mean, it's almost the same height as you. So look cool. at that background, how cool it looks with I the lights hitting I you can hitting just it. see straight through the bottom. Well, for right now, yeah, but, but ultimately open it up so we can see what's going on in there. Sure is nice having a girlfriend that's got muscles. Help me pick that up on there, right, babe? Thanks a lot, babe. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. That thing is not light, huh? No. That is old, thick glass. No, it was huffing. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. So the under gravel lights will shine right up through the under gravel filter and light that up. So there you go. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be super cool, guys. All right, let's get the... Uh, Filter finished up and then get that in here and everything. This is really gonna turn out to be an awesome, awesome stand. I really like how this paint came out. 
I'm kind of glad we did it in two different tones because it gives it a lot more character. There are wrinkles here, but it actually looks kind of cool. Well, we kind of did it on purpose because we wanted that texture. Yeah. I think it came out awesome. And I thought that this would sit totally on the top, but it actually doesn't. And it kind of has a nice little ridge around it. Jack's playing with the dimmer. It's nice to have that dimmer because yeah. we can adjust that any way we want, you know. That's going to be super cool. And that bamboo is going to be coming out and that light will be hitting it. It's going to be fantastic, man. All right. One and a half centimeters. Okay, you're kind of OCD. One and a half centimeters. Hey, listen. Yes, I am. But here's the thing. You want this nice and straight because when you fill this guy up with water, there ain't no moving it after that. It's nice and centered. It's perfect. One and a half centimeters all the way around. This is going to look tight. All right, here's what we decided. Those two heaters we're going to save because they're only 100 watts. They're going to go over there behind Jack against that wall with the 75 that we got recently. We are going to be building the, what kind of tank out of that? We're going to make the green lantern core. Yes, that's going to be awesome. Totally one of the most funnest tanks we've ever made. We found two 300 watt heaters we're going to put in this tank, which is kind of overkill. But it's better to have too much and not enough. Yeah. You can never really have a heater that's too big. It just basically means they're not going to turn on as often or yeah. as long. Yeah. We found an amazing deal on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description um, if I remember by the time I release this video. But there was some kind of special on these submersible heaters. Like two, three hundred waters for like 20 bucks or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was as much as the 50 watt. I think they had an over abundance or something. So anyway, I got two. They'll be here in two days. They're going to go over here in the corners, so we're not going to worry about those right now. All right, here's another amazing clearance uh, thing that we found at Mark's for like five bucks. Or was it Drug Mart? I think it was Drug Mart. Instead of, you know, taking out the ladder or standing on chairs and stuff all the time, this is really awesome for the tanks. It was like four ninety nine. They had like a million of these on a pallet at Drug Mart. Yeah, it was Drug Mart. So this is really great for the tanks. We're going to get up here, and we're going to be able to get over these tanks now. We don't really have a cover for this tank. We did find this old powder coated piece of metal that came from an old fluorescent light we had sitting around. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just grind out this middle here on both sides and it does fit perfectly and sit down on here very nicely. What that's gonna do is that's gonna kind of be a splash guard. We're gonna drill a bunch of holes in it so that we can put some smaller pieces of bamboo that propagate off the larger ones in here. So they'll all be kind of sticking out the back here, growing, and also for, you know, like heater cords and the air tubes. All right, so you can see we basically just took the hacksaw and the grinder, made a little thing here, flipped this up. This fits on here real nice and flush. Probably just leave these tabs on here. There's really no reason to take them off. Um, it fits real nice and flush on the back. You can see that this corner touches here, this corner touches here. This is definitely powder coated. This paint really was hard to take off of here, even with the grinder. So uh, we're not sure that we're even really gonna need to paint it or anything like that. And we don't really mind it being like a white strip. So we're just gonna drill a whole bunch of holes in this and kind of put it on the back, start feeding tubes through. Okay, so that came out pretty good. Basically just drilled some holes in the corner and all along here, let me take that camera I want to show underneath here. What's going to happen is when we put an under gravel light on here, it's going to shine right up through these vases. And because we silicone those, that's glass touching glass. So the glass a hurricane is touching the glass on the bottom. The reason we did that is then the gravel that's on this under gravel filter is not going to go down in there. And instead of putting a glass using a hurricane, is going to allow the fish, the little plecos and stuff, to go down in there and clean it. Because obviously if you have a light on here, there's going to be algae growing. Well, because there's nothing in between this glass and that. And that's how we always do this, isn't it, buddy? Yes. So the, so the little plecos are going to go through here. So let me get back on here. I want to kind of show these guys how this is going to go. Hand me one of those pots just so they can kind of see. Hand me one of them big pots, buddy. All right, so this is how this is gonna go, guys. This is gonna sit down. After we get the gravel in here, this is gonna sit down right on top of it like this. And then give me the other pot. So this pot, nope, the small one. 
So that light's gonna be shining up through here, but this pot is gonna be filled with gravel. So you're gonna see light shining out of these holes all the way around 360 degrees. Fish will be able to go in and out of those. This is gonna be full of gravel. Bamboo's gonna be coming out similar to how it is on that tank, except because we have it raised up, it's gonna stick up even taller, kind of fill up this area of the wall here. So that's gonna be the key. We're gonna fill this all in with gravel. The under gravel filter is gonna do a great job, except for that small place. We do have a special centerpiece that we're gonna be putting on here too, but that's gonna be separate. That's gonna be a whole separate project. All right, so we got both of the pots in there. We got the back posts that are gonna work, you know, as the uh, air tubes here for the undergrowth filter. We're gonna have them go to about 25. We want a little bit of clearance on the top, um, you know, for evaporation and stuff like that. So we're gonna take them to about 25. We're gonna cut basically all the tops off those. We may end up actually saving those and using those for a different project or something of that nature. Always keep, always keep your remnants, right? You never know what you're gonna use it for. So let's cut these, it'll be real quick, take two seconds with a hacksaw. Okay, so we got the first three on. One of the things that we have learned in having these stacks is you wanna kind of push this underground filter forward quite a bit because you want there to be a little bit of space here. If you don't have any space here, your fish can get kind of trapped. The other thing is, is your plecos aren't gonna be able to get back behind here and clean it. And it's gonna be hard to, to get back here with anything and clean it. But if you push the under gravel filter like closer to the front and leave a space in the back, see how I can fit my hand in here pretty well. So that's the way we do it. We push it up close to the front. And honestly, you're not gonna see it because see how it has like a slant. So that gravel is gonna fill that in. You're not gonna see it anyway. Um, here, Jack's going to go ahead and just focus on that last stack there. And that's all we're doing is we're taking these and we're pushing them on here. And when it comes to this kind of stuff, just go easy, kind of twist it, and put it on. You don't want to squeeze too tight. Maybe go back and forth a little bit and just kind of twist it on there. So you can see there how it's pretty far on. It's almost touching the bottom. That's on there nice and good. You got a good seal and it's not going to come off or anything. Okay, so basically what we did is we just took a little piece. We had like little remnants of this blue tubing left, uh, about two centimeter pieces, shoved it about a centimeter or so on the end of this, and then you're gonna put it on your air stone. These were just cheap little air stones we found on sale. Not a really big deal. It doesn't really matter what kind you use. We got a little secret. We did a video to show people that they get block, uh, blocked up or plugged. You just hook up like a bicycle pump to it, give them a big pump, and it'll blow everything off of them, and we do that every few months. Okay, so basically we're just putting some tubing on here. Same thing, not really that hard. Push it down about a good centimeter. You wanna make sure it doesn't come off. Wiggle it back and forth. Now that's gonna kinda go down. And if you look at that stone, you can kinda just adjust where you want it. We like to kinda have it right about there. Now, if you bring the camera back up here, buddy, the, as this kind of leans down, the weight of this tubing will kind of just keep that where you want it to be. It's not really gonna go up or down. It's just gonna pull, but it's not enough to crimp it. So all four of these are done. You can tell by looking across the top here that all four of these are now hooked up. So all four of those are where we want them. Air's gonna come up there now. There is a little question that some people are gonna have. If you have little fish or fry or snails that are small, are they gonna be able to go down these stacks? Yes, they are, absolutely. Are they gonna be able to swim against those bubbles? Some will, some won't. Most of them will not, depending on how much you have. If you've got a large amount of bubbles, it's not gonna do that. Now, is there something you can do about that? Yes, they do sell little things that you could put on here, little adapters, and you can Google those, or you can look around where they'll have like a cover and a screen. Some even have charcoal cartridges and things like that. Um, you could probably put, you know, a piece of sponge in. There's a lot of things you could do. We're not really gonna have too small a fish. The other thing is, is even if the fish did make it down to the bottom, they're not necessarily gonna be able to get past that stone in that little area there. I mean, you can see that the stone fills a lot of that area. Um, if you have snails go to your under gravel filter, they're not really gonna harm it. Um, 
They're probably not going to be able to live very long down there without any light or anything. They might. You can check by looking underneath your cabinet and looking under the bottom, but we've never really had a problem with it. If it did present to be a problem, you could put some kind of screen or something over that or a sponge or something of that nature. For this tank, we're going to be putting some pretty decently large fish. We're not really worried about it. All right, so underneath here, here's what's going on. All four of those tubes are coming down. They will inevitably go into an air pump. We've got a couple of different old ones. We're not exactly sure which one we're going to use. This is going to be the main electricity. We got this old circuit breaker. Bought that for like a buck or two at a garage sale, actually. It's a really nice one. It just goes around and plugs in, comes over here. All of our timers and lights will be into there. We do have a double outlet. If we need to bring another one over here, we can. We most likely will have to uh, before it's over. So at this point in time, these guys are pretty well set up. The stacks are in. The tubing is in. The splash guard is in. Pretty much, you know, at this point in time, we're going to stop. Um, the next video will then show the gravel filled in. We're going to have the, uh, the plants in here. We're going to have the pump going. We're going to have the heaters in here. It's pretty much going to be done at that point. We may even trim some of the other bamboo that we have and have some of those smaller pieces coming out of here. So they'll be like bamboo there and coming out of the top and filling the whole wall. It's going to be really, really cool. The new light's done. The background lights are done. And it's really, really coming along great. Jack said that he thought, you said it, that when we faced it this way, you thought it looked like what? Kind of looks like an alien face. Yeah, kind of looks like an alien face. So we turned it this way. Kind of looks like an upside down alien face now, but no, it just looks better. <laughs> but it does look better. It does look like kind of weird, like kind that. Of yeah, it's a little creepy at night with the background lights, like a alien face. So they're gonna be faced this way. Light will be coming out of those. It's coming along great, guys. I'll tell you, we are loving how this stand came out. Loving how this tank came out. We, we took this old, beat-up uh, tank that was basically going to be thrown in the trash, right? Yeah. And, like, like, just, you know, made something awesome out of it. Yeah, it took a little elbow grease, took a little time, took a little work, but it's going to end up being a beautiful accent to our yeah, dining room. Good with the carpet. The carpet kind of blends yeah, blends into the color of the room. Here's the big 220 over here. They're going to be right around the corner from each other. There's the big, uh, you know, dining room table over here, so it's all going to go well. we got more stuff we're going to be hanging up on the walls. This is leftover bamboo that we had when we ordered it. Look how tall it is already. It's huge. So we're going to be trimming some of this off just from our dining room uh, table thing. And some of that's going to be going in here too. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future videos. That's been three videos we've done on this tank now. We've got probably two more before we're completely done and, and kind of... And hit the bell and like the video if you liked it. Yeah, hit the bell so you don't miss the notification, guys. Go stand next to that so they can see how big it is. I mean, you know, look how huge this tank is coming along. It's really looking beautiful in here. Love it. Guys, we'll see you next time.